folks, another quick one for you. Uh, this one also based on a forum, uh, so internal forum this week. Somebody asked the question, how do I import the attributes of parents in a parent-child import? So a parent-child import is kind of unique in that it allows you to create multiple levels of a dimension at the same time that you import just two columns. So not having a column for each level, just two columns, one with a child, one with a parent. And those parents could, of course, uh, go back and forth to build many levels of a hierarchy. Now, in the UI, you drag an attribute to that parent level, it'll automatically drop to the child level. So the reason for that is pretty straightforward and it's fundamental to TM1 in that attributes are not related directly to a level, they're related to a dimension. So a dimension, the, all the elements in that will have uh, an attribute, not a specific level. So those of you who come from data warehousing backgrounds, often work with relational databases and that sort of thing, will very often associate attributes to a level that's not how things work in TM1. We do associate attributes with elements in a dimension, no matter what level those are at. Pretty quick and easy, though, if you do want to import attributes just for parent levels of a hierarchy or even a specific level, and I'm going to show you that here. So let's get started. First, we'll take a look at our file, and I'm using a CSV file here because it's very easy for me to create some sample data with that, but this is source agnostic problem and solution. It doesn't matter if this were a database or a Cognos 10 package or what have you. The reason that this is a parent-child import is worth mentioning. So we have two columns, employee and manager. Very often you'll see that these organizational dimensions are both unbalanced and often have these parent-child type imports. I can see here that I have a manager who is called Pam Little and she also exists as an employee. And there is circularity in this file between manager and employee that allows us to build up many levels of a hierarchy. So I'm going to do a guided import of dimensions. We're doing a dimension import here. I'm gonna call this import employees. Browse out to my file, conveniently located here with three columns as we just looked at. I'm gonna click advanced. And then I'm going to start making changes because I want my employees to dimension to import using the parent-child import. I want to make manager the parent, employee the child, and manager email is going to be an attribute. It's going to be a text attribute, not alias, because again, in the end, what we want is a email only for those items that are managers. I don't want the employees to get this value. And by using alias or caption types, what I would see is the invariant name populating that alias so that we have uniqueness for all elements in the dimension. I'm going to click finish and let that create the default employee dimension. And we see the problem. So again, the default approach is going to put the manager's email column in based on the employee, and it's going to be populated for everyone, not just for those folks who are managers. So let's close this, delete it, and rebuild it. I'll click OK because I do really want to delete that. Let's look at the process that was generated by that initial import. So we can see everything we specified in the guided import from a mapping perspective, the data source, and so on. What we're interested in here is in the advanced section, which has, of course, four main script parts. Not much happening in the prologue, just specifying the sort order. The metadata section, which is going to execute once for every record in the data source, has the bulk of our logic to insert elements to the dimension, employees at the N level, managers at the C level or consolidated level and adding their dependent employee, and one little bit of logic to test to see if we're at the top level by seeing if manager is the same or if that column is empty, in which case we assume that's the top. And then the part that we want to modify is in the data section, which is where we add the attributes. Now a purist concerned about performance would point out that by having any values in the data section, we cause a second iteration through every record in the file. 
If you have 100 records, it doesn't matter. If you have 100 million, it might. And for this explicit statement here, this value could go in the metadata section. However, the change that we're about to make does need to be in a second pass because we're looking for the level that an employee is at, in which case we need to do that in a second pass. We don't know the levels until the first pass completes. Because what we're trying to do is really simple and just only do this for items in the manager column, we could just change our approach from using employee, so the left side column with the employee detail, to use just the manager column. That's going to occur for every record, but it's of course going to be the same as we iterate through our employees. If I wanted to be a little fussier about when that occurred, I have another bit of code here that I might add, which tests the level. So it does effectively the same thing in this case because we're looking for anything greater than level zero or the leaf. Hierarchies in TM1, of course, the levels build up from zero being the leaf. And I could, for example, say I only want to do this for the next level up of manager or what have you just by changing that condition. Let's save this and run it to see how our dimension builds now. That's successful. We'll open our employees. And you can see that only those employees who are managers get their email, and that's their own email, attached to that column. And a final word of caution here, we've just made changes to the generated section of a process. That generated section is built from how we map our data. So changes to the mapping or the data source would cause that to be overwritten. You'll want to transfer out that process to save it or do something like that in case someone decides to change the mapping and revert it. That's not going to revert our code in that generated section. So thanks for your time and happy modeling.